Hey guys, today we are going to be making this ultimate Nick Fury video for my new R4 Nick Fury. So starting off, we just have um, some generic um, big number fights and Cavi Q and Elaine and 7.3. Um, just to show some of the exciting stuff first off. And yeah, there are going to be a whole lot of fights here. This took a whole lot of time to make and there will be time codes in the description for you guys to check out. If you want to see what kind of fights I did, um, and yeah, the first part will just be this big numbers, as I said, the second part will have a bunch of Act 6 fights, then the third part will have some Act 7 fights, and then there will be a part, uh, for number 4 with some Alliance War fights, and then at the end I will show some Abyss and Labyrinth fights, just to get that damage showcase on you know and yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video because i have been working on it for a really long time So yeah, here we are going into 7.3.3 um, for this Paradox debuff potency lane and Do You Bleed. And when you get Paradox built up and you go into Second Life, Nick is just going to have some absolutely ridiculous numbers. On this first fight, we're just building up Paradox and we don't have to worry about it too much because we have Heimdall brought on the team. If Paradox explodes, Heimdall will save us and Nick Fury ends fights so quickly that there's not much worry of going to uh, 9 Paradox. So just an amazing counter, of course, for this. And yeah, as you can see here, we're getting 35,000 ticks without even having Paradox up to 8, which is just silly. And he's just ending the fight so ridiculously quick. And here we are going to Act 6 now for Part 2 of this video. Up first, we have the 6.1.5 Champion. Not necessarily the same roadblock it used to be back in the day. But Nick Fury, due to shrugging debuffs in Second Life, is just going to be an absolute beast for this. And I wanted to put this as sort of a baseline of Nick Fury's damage without the bleeds. Keep in mind there is Arc Overload here, which is giving an absolute fuckton of healing to Crossbones. So, his health pool is a little bit deceiving in the fact that he will have a lot more health in this fight than is you know, shown in that health pool. And yeah, just going to be uh, trying to throw L1s, um, one, to give extra Furies, and two, to give Crossbones extra power. Um, 
using the strategy, you're going to be able to just throw L1, bait L1 for a lot. And when you have two Furies up, your damage is going to get a pretty big boost. And thanks to Nick Fury's really solid crit rate, even though, um, you know, these aren't the biggest hits in the world or anything, over time, the damage is really, really good thanks to that crit rate. And yeah, here we head into 6.1.6 .6 Aspect of War. There are a lot of Aspect of War lanes in 6.1. It's one of the most tricky nodes in 6.1. Um, a pretty common occurrence, and we're going to go ahead and take this full lane with Nick Fury. He is an excellent Aspect of War counter, just due to the fact that he ends fights before they go unblockable. And most of the time, you don't really need the beta special, especially when you have this much damage. Of course, 6-star R4 in Act 6 is a little bit deceiving at how much you're punching down in content, but a 5-star Nick Fury will do this just the same. It is a lot of overkill for this fight, as you can see there. When you go down to this kind of health pool, his damage just looks absolutely broken. And man, I'm just in love with this R4 Nick Fury. Uh, I remember when I first did this lane, I had been really, really struggling to get through it. Um, back when, you know, I barely had R5s, let alone R4 6 stars. And man, the difference now with R4 6 stars and X6 is just ridiculous. Of course, as expected, they are way ahead of the curve for this content. And Nick Fury is just an absolute powerhouse. And here we go to one of the trickiest fights in 6.2, the Do Not, Do Not Go Gentle Electro. Um, the main issue here is the poison and regen compared with, uh, combined with Electro. When this was released, there were not many champions who were able to take this fight. I believe it was just Corvus and Omega Red upon release that were generally considered good options. And the combination of Do Not Go Gentle here just combines into everything else to make this a really tricky fight. 
Uh, Nick Fury is just absolutely demolishing it through brute force. Of course, do not go gentle takes you down a bit, but just absolutely fantastic. And now 6.3 Medusa. Um, this Medusa is uh, another one of those roadblock bosses in Act 6 if you don't have a proper counter to her. Admittedly, a lot more counters have been released again since this fight was originally um, created. And Nick Fury is definitely the best counter. You dex before you go into second life to keep your, fear, your fury up. And then your damage is just ridiculous thanks to bleed vulnerability and um, do you bleed combined here or anyone with really big bleeds will do really amazingly. The Furies don't really scale that all that well so you are perfectly fine to stay in first life and your damage will still be absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I did want that up unblockable from second life. And yeah, as you can see, the fight's pretty much already over while I was talking about it. Just very, very silly. Go to that 6.3.4 power lane. And this is just brute forcing through it to show um, a mix of just how good Nick Fury's nuking capability is and how useful that second life can be because it just provides that absolute safety that pretty much no matter what Hyperion does, I will survive this fight. And yeah, all of these fights on this lane are roughly the same except for after this fight, I do just force myself into second life to go quicker and speed things up for you, but I don't necessarily recommend this if you are doing this lane with Nick Fury. Obviously, it's best to stay in first life almost any time you're using Nick Fury. Uh, most of the time I'm going to second life is just for this video because I want the video to be fairly quick, both for it being more watchable and just easier for me to create this video. Now we head on to Acid Wash and EMP mod in 6.3.6. .6. Now the main issue here is really just EMP mod combined with some of these defenders like Scar Scarlet Witch who gives the opponent lots of buffs and then there is a Nightcrawler who has Evade and then there's a Modok later on and there is an Ebony Maw. Nick Fury works well for a lot of these um... And yeah, it just lets you nuke through with his pure damage, of course. Whenever you have so much damage, there's a lot that you shouldn't really be able to fight that you can just nuke through. 
And this land is a perfect example of that. And here we go to 6.4.1, Do You Bleed? Um, due to the combination of Do You Bleed and Redoubled, a lot of bleeders don't really work particularly well here because a lot of them rely on stacking multiple bleed debuffs. But with how Nick Fury's bleed works, he only needs the one bleed. And anything else is just extra damage that you really don't need at all. And this helps work around the redoubled determination and make him just take these fights extremely easily. There is a clapback when pool on the slain. At 6RR4, Nick Fury will take this perfectly fine as well. I would recommend bringing Heimdall for it, but, you know, that's just a nice thing to have. And just nukes through the slain so ridiculously well. We go to we go to 6.4.4 and this has the energy adoption incinerate and the debuff you use to turn off the incinerates for this energy adoption version is bleeds and of course Nick Fury is going to work extremely well for this and then Icarus is pairing extremely well with Nick Fury to just give crazy damage and just mowing through these fights with Icarus.
And here is a fight in Axe X to show you just how versatile these bleeds are. And what Nick Fury is doing for this lane is any DOT bypasses that's going to sting. Which is why it's so nice to have Nick Fury's damage in the form that it is. Um, allowing you to bypass nodes like this and similar nodes. I know there are a lot of paths like this scattered around X7. So seemingly becoming a more common node, it's a really nice thing to have. Uh, for this, we have the Act 7 part of this uh, R4 Nick Fury showcase, and we're gonna just start off with this Rhino boss. Um, one of the trickier fights in 7.1, and Nick Fury was the best option by far for it. So, as you'll see, it's Power Shield, and there's this Tramp Tantrum node where you have to have a Disorient or a couple other debuffs to be able to turn it off, and if you don't, turn it off you will take some burst damage when you knock the opponent down so of course Nick Fury having that easy access to uh, disorient on his L1 is an amazing option for this Now here is Cage Rattler, Stun Vulnerability, and Aspect of War. The basic idea here is you want to end fights pretty quickly, and that's just the main strat for this. Of course you can use someone that counters Aspect of War, but just ending the fight before anything matters works best. And as you can see, with Stun Vuln, Nick, even in First Life, is just absolutely demolishing all of these. And it's just a joke of a lane with him.
Now here in 6.2.6, there is this shifting immunity and uh, energy adoption fire node where you want the bleeds to be able to turn off the incinerates and if on dashback you're going to shrug and there is bleed vulnerability on the nodes so you will be doing really good damage when you've got your bleeds up as you see here Now here is this Eye Hulk in 7.3. Um, it has a uh, protect heavy hitter for the ebb and flow thing. And it has do not go gentle. Um, Nick Fury is just going to work extremely well here because of the bleeds bypassing Eye Hulk's immortality making the fight just really, really easy. And then for here, we have this spider ham boss in 7.3 that was fairly annoying. Um, it has this shifting immunity node again, and it has um, 
power sting nodes, which are really annoying because it lets spam build up all of that spider nonsense, and it has steady build up unblockable. I mean, not unblockable, steady build up fury, which means he's going to be getting a lot of extra damage if he ends up hitting you. Yes, now for part 4 of this, which is Alliance Horde, which is the main reason I are for Nick Fury. Um, and, yeah, that's why I wanted to put this in here. A lot of these you're gonna already have seen uploaded from my war videos this season. But I still wanted to put this in here, just because, you know, war is pretty much the only reason I are for Nick Fury. And, yeah, it would definitely not be right to just leave Alliance War out of this when, you know, that's the big thing and all. So, yeah, here we have a Green Goblin, which is just showing how much of a nuke Nick Fury really is. And it's just silly. Look at this. I beat literally a single special the entire fight, and he's dead. Very, very easy fight. And then here, the power slang mojo, another fight where you wouldn't really think Nick Fury's a great option for, but he just absolutely demolishes it. Because, you know, uh, with a lot of skill champions, they are pretty much limited to mostly their own matchups where they're really going to shine. You know, there are exceptions, the main ones being Nick Fury and Kingpin, and occasionally Mole Man with power boosts. But generally, for skill champs, you really only expect them to be good in those very specific areas. But as you'll see with Nick Fury, he just goes so far beyond that. Um, that's just what makes him such a fantastic R4. Because one, he's probably never going to get banned in Alliance War, and two, he just helps plan with Alliance War bans so much. He works around a lot of the most difficult bans to plan for. And especially having that at R4, since he is a nuke, it just adds a lot of safety. Ending these fights ever so slightly quicker is a pretty huge deal in some of these fights, you know? And yeah, here's a thing just to show you a fight without the bleeds and what his damage is like there. And the reason he's doing so much damage seemingly in this fight is because Nick Fury has a really high crit rate. It's one of the highest crit rates in the game, which allows him to still do respectable damage on fights like a thing. Which is a really nice touch on his game.
And now here's a fight to showcase Nick Fury's safety net. Um, I am going to mess up this fight about as poorly as you realistically can. My strat is to tank L3s with invuln, and as you will see, I immediately lose my invuln charges. But thankfully, since Nick Fury is just such a safe champion, even messing up fights pretty much as bad as you possibly can, you're gonna be able to get out with at least a solo for a lot of matchups, which is a really, really nice thing, and it's part of what makes, you know, a champion like Doom so good, is their ability to just get out of these tricky situations, you know? And now I just wanted to showcase a generic science fight um, in war. This is just a path for spider ham And you will see just, yes, he's amazing outside of science champions. And that is the main focal point for a lot of this video. But even for those science matchups, he's still going to be the best option. Let's not get it twisted. He's just absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, we don't even, we're, we aren't even countering Spider-Ham's evade. He's over, bef he's just dead before we can even do that. Hey guys, and to finish off this video, we're just going to have a generic damage showcase. Um, we have start off with Labyrinth Red Hulk, and then we will have uh, Labyrinth Star Lord. These are two just very basic fights with nothing really special about them, so I'll just let you guys watch them, and then give a bit of commentary on the Abyss fights that I'm going to showcase as well.
Now, for this Abyss Invisible Woman, the main thing she has is these power things. Whenever you gain a bar of power, or she gains a bar of power, she's going to apply a power thing to you. And the way to work around these power things is if you have a debuff up, they will not stun you. So, Nick Fury's bleeds work really well here, and then he's just an absolute beast with his damage, so he's going to absolutely destroy this fight. So now there is this abyss quake, and the main thing she has here is these earthquake charges, which each time you apply a bleed or you crit, you will remove the earthquake charges, and if she gets to 99, she's going to do some damage to you with them. And yeah, I wasn't able to get a solo on this fight. Um, it's very doable, I just suck at Dex and Quakes all one. So this is the best that I'm going to get, and yeah, we, we came close enough to a solo and we had a lot of hits left so
And yeah, thank you guys for watching this uh, Ultimate Showcase video for my R4 Nick Fury. I am super happy with the R4 after a few weeks of using him in content and Alliance War. I just couldn't be happier. Definitely happy with my decision to R4 Nick Fury. He's been an absolute beast in Alliance War, as I'm sure you guys have all seen. And... There's something that I haven't really talked about yet in any of my videos or anything, and it's having an R4 Nick Fury is making planning significantly easier. When you can send Nick Fury to just kind of random bullshit matchups that he's going to be a best option for, even though there's not really much going for him in the fight, sort of similar to what I was doing with Doom, it just is going to make planning so much easier and nick fury's a one works really well for high ground and having that second life provides so much safety that you can get away with a lot in war and that is just such a nice quality to have